The first answer I saw it when researching loot was, what game started the whole loot thing? A lot of arrows pointed squarely at Diablo, but it turns out loot has been in our games for longer than that. A lot longer. The loot that we find in pretty much every video game first showed up in the 1940s, in what was substantially the inspiration for all modern RPGs. I've never played a tabletop RPG, but the more I hear about them, the more I think I really should have. Yet they had loot tables you would roll dice on. There were several systems, and usually only the Game Master could see what it was you were rolling for. The presence of loot in video games didn't come as a watershed moment either. There was basic loot in some text games, and it really became a thing in early Final Fantasy games. Of course, while saying Diablo wasn't first isn't technically true, the way it embraced loot was as near a spiritual first that it's kind of like calling Pluto a planet. It's close enough. What's important is that it wasn't some invention, some paradigm change. Loot has been in video games since there have been enough kilobytes on a disc to fit a loot table. How robust the loot system is, is only limited by the hardware. I had trouble finding games on my Steam list that didn't have a loot system, and scrolling down, it was really just the simulators, and games like this one. This is Assault Android Cactus, and I'm glad I found it because I'm bad at segues and this one wrote itself. It's easier to define what loot isn't than what it is, and this is not loot. These are power-ups. There's no inventory here, there's no currency, there's no saving items. You pick something up, it's immediately applied. The makers could have easily put in a leveling system or purchasable upgrades, but they didn't. It's nice to remember that every now and then, you don't have to play a game that's deep. Sometimes it's nice to just grab that controller, hold down right trigger for 10 minutes, and blast some everything. I'm not a fan of ambiguity in my definitions though, so let's try to trim it down some more. If an item is needed for a quest, it's not loot, it's a key item. A health kit or ammo can be considered loot if it's otherwise rare or prohibitively expensive. But if it's a common item that you could buy, it's more a game mechanic than loot. If an item is a fixed reward for a mission that you're substantially likely to do in the progress of beating a game, it's not loot, it's a mission reward. In real life, you don't consider a paycheck or a dental plan loot. Finding a 20 on the sidewalk on the way to work is loot. Loot has to be something that could or could not show up while playing a game, and while sheer randomality is not a requisite, it sure makes it easier to qualify. Let's take a stab at something concrete. Items that can, but are not guaranteed to, show up in a typical playthrough of a game and are not individually and directly required for the progress of any aspect of the game. I chose to use the word individually because it could be the case that you do need a certain quality of loot equipped to reasonably beat a game, but because you could swap out one piece of loot with another and still beat the game, it still qualifies as loot. If I need this hat specifically to beat the game, it's not loot. If I need any hat, then any hat can be loot. In my quest to remove ambiguity, I found that I was, in effect, excluding games like Elden Ring. While you do pick up items on occasion, it's basically just crafting stuff or ammo. All of the interesting stuff is gotten from completing tasks, and it's always in the same place. There's no real inventory system. You just walk around with several thousand pounds of weapons and armor, and that is fine. Not every game has to have Bethesda-style inventory micromanagement. It feels like the devs just didn't want to make that type of game, so they went with some bare-bones utilitarian menus and got back to the business of whacking at big things with pointy objects. But that's not to say the whole loot thing is faff. There are lots of games out there that do it justice, and I'd like to run from one extreme to another on the grayscale that is loot. If you're not immediately recognizing it, this is Arma 3. I don't know my mill sims too well, they tend to be above my skill set, and I'm sure if I call this realistic I'll get a bunch of comments telling me I don't know what I'm talking about, so let's just say it's more realistic than Call of Duty or Fallout. I'm pretty confident of that. Arma 3 takes a very literal approach to loot. So here's a dead guy, and everything he had on him is here. It's not some random drops, if he had it, I can take it. It's a bit slow to navigate, and while I'm pretty sure with practice I can get pretty quick about it, this doesn't pause time. There's no way you could do this in the middle of a fight, especially since Arma is a one-hit kill kind of game. This is deliberate. From what I've heard, you don't really see much looting in active combat zones. If it's going to happen, it'll happen when the shooting stops. It changes looting from a given to a tactical decision. Integrating looting into the decision-making process makes it a gameplay mechanic. It gives it a purpose. DayZ, which started life as a mod for Arma 2, ratchets this up a notch. Looting is no less dangerous, but it's now not just a mechanic, 
It's a core mechanic, and you need to do it to survive. The same is the case with Project Zomboid, where every decision you make is risk analysis, and looting is a dangerous activity. But if you don't do it, you don't live. It's not just an activity in the game, it is the game. No matter how well you're set up, sooner or later, you're going to have to get back into the thick of it because you broke a tool, or you need medicine, or you ran out of hot sauce. And then there's This War of Mine, a truly excellent game that doesn't get brought up enough. You and a couple other civilians are stuck in a war zone, and you have to somehow survive in a lawless, incredibly dangerous reason until there's a ceasefire. You're not a soldier. You're not saving the day. You don't even really know what the war is about. You just know you need food and water to survive, and you don't have them. And you're not the only one who doesn't have them. And there's not enough. The people you're looting from, or who are trying to loot from you, are probably not normally bad people. They're just trying to survive, like you. I've not seen a game do a better job of making finding a single tin of food seem like a godsend, but this war of mine will get you to the point where you're willing to kill for it. Of course, taking a literal approach to loot doesn't necessitate it becoming a core mechanic. Rimworld, for instance, has loot, but it's less there to add to gameplay and more because it'd seem weird if it didn't. When you take down an invading force, for the most part all the good weapons will be unusable and the attackers will be wearing mediocre gear. By the time you're done with the attackers, most of their clothes will be tainted. Tainted means someone died in it. Your pawns will suffer a ratty old shirt that's falling apart, but not one that has two holes and a lot of blood. The short of it is that it's rare anything you loot won't be trash, so it's less a game mechanic and more a concession to immersion. You can see how close to the fence they were on this decision. While mortars and the like have ammo, bows and machine guns and even grenade launchers don't. Any discussion of loot was always going to overlap with inventory management pretty substantially, because while inventory isn't necessarily loot, loot sure is inventory, and the two need to mesh. Utility alone is not enough for it to work, and before the pitchforks come out, I'm going to be talking about New Vegas's survival, well, hardcore, mode, which most of you never finished. Yeah, really. Now, Bethesda games have always been very liberal with their carry capacities, and New Vegas is no exception. A design choice being unrealistic doesn't necessarily ruin a game, and the balance in New Vegas suits the game, because it's just a game, just fine. Where it runs afoul is when they try to bring realism into the question with hardcore mode, and the 20 pounds of survival gear you're now carrying is nothing for your beefcake protagonist. It doesn't really have an effect on the way the game plays out. While New Vegas' regular inventory system works, hardcore fails to actually do anything for the game. It was so close, too. While they don't really play nice with YouTube's compression, if you use a no ambient lighting mod, which as you see here, makes the nights pitch black, and don't use fast travel, it changes everything about hardcore mode. Night is now unbelievably dangerous. If you're out at night, it's because you screwed up. You now find yourself planning out your entire day before you even walk out the door. How much water do I need? How much food do I need? What guns am I bringing? How much ammo? How much space do I leave for loot? You're out the door at 4 a.m. on the nose because you want every available hour before night, and you'll be home by night, or you'll be dead. Or maybe you're going far and you need to plan an overnight trip, so you're deciding where you're going to sleep that night and bringing extra supplies. Suddenly everything about hardcore mode becomes part of the gameplay, and you have a must-try experience that I just can't go back from when I play New Vegas, or any other Bethesda game for that matter. Of course, Bethesda followed up Fallout 3 in New Vegas with Skyrim, and instead of cleaning things up, Skyrim decided to embrace the crazy. I'm not knocking Skyrim, mind you. Skyrim's bonkers inventory is something we all remember with a knowing smirk. We may not typically think of Skyrim as a loot game, but I can't think of many other games that have you hemorrhaging swords and armors and who knows what else quite like Skyrim. The unmistakable sound of leaving the inventory window you make room for 50 more items. Skyrim is about as looty as it gets. What works here is that they embrace it. Skyrim's not a story about someone killing dragons. It's about someone looting the entire history of a nation and selling it back to the locals for a fiver. I love the idea of some guy walking into town, struggling under the weight of enough ebony swords to sway the balance of power in the whole country, and just flogging them to the local botanist, who's now the preeminent arms dealer within a hundred miles. So does this actually do anything for gameplay? Well, no. It actively gets in the way of it. 
Yet, I still remember it fondly, and it took me a bit of thinking to figure out why. You see, Skyrim isn't a series of missions. It's not even really clear which plot is the main plot. No, Skyrim is a world that you live in. Looting is your job. It pays for your gear, your upgrades, your house, and oh yeah, your kids. Because you have kids in Skyrim. Skyrim is the frickin' Sims. Except The Sims doesn't have dragons. Oh wait, it does. In Fallout 4, you can see a pretty concerted effort to bring this all into check. They both did and didn't pull this off. What I'll give them a nod for is the looting of components. Poking around ruins, learning what knickknacks to pick up and what to leave, scrounging to get the materials to make items for your settlements, all that worked. Matter of fact, I'll give it more than a nod. There's few games that nail the definition of looting quite like Fallout 4. This is what life would be like in a world like this, and I wish it had been much, much more of the game. If someone took this map and this mechanic and did a crossover with This War of Mine, this would be about the greatest game ever. On the other hand, though, Fallout 4 still has the too-much-stuff problem that Skyrim did without the payoff. The Commonwealth never quite pulls off Skyrim's This Is Home feel, the why of which could be a whole other video, but that would just be a tangent here. And because of that, all that inventory management just seems superfluous. Survival mode makes things interesting for the first 25 levels or so, but that just doesn't stay challenging into the mid-game. The problem seems to be that they wanted a mix of realistic and accessible, and wound up with neither. I can say that this pretty confidently, because there are some interesting mods that let you do either extreme. On one end, you can basically remove the whole looting system altogether, with salvage beacons by Kinggath. You build a comm station at any settlement, and now you can drop salvage beacons into almost any container, and a settler will come by in about a day, grab both the beacon and anything else you put in the container, and haul it back to the settlement you choose. I like that there's a delay to keep a bit of immersion in there, but it's really just cutting out the loot mechanic altogether. It speeds up the game a whole bunch, because you're just not doing loot management at all anymore. Sometimes no system is better than a bad system, and this does just that. But the extreme opposite is much better. At first glance, the Fall Souls mod doesn't have much to do with inventory. What this mod does is let you choose what does and does not pause the game. In particular, the Pip-Boy. In addition to making loot management something you can't do in combat, because you'll get shot, it also means you can't take all day going through it, because you'll burn through your food, water, and daylight doing it. In practice, this forces you to engage with the inventory system on the clock, and when you don't really have time to debate what you're going to carry, inventory management becomes part of the gameplay. You can take this even further by doing a no storage run, where, once you've left a room, everything you left behind is considered stolen, including at your bases, so there's no storing weapons, armor, ammo, food, you're living out of your pack. I actually recorded a full run with those rules and it's on my channel, but I'll say beforehand this was also my first big product on YouTube, and it kind of shows. It gets pretty good by episode 15 or so, but you know, hey, you gotta start somewhere, right? So while Fallout 4 gets a pretty strong pass because of mods, there's plenty of games that don't really have options like that, and we have to take them as they are. We have to talk about last year's biggest game, because despite the game's many good points, the inventory and loot system was terrible. I know Baldur's Gate 3 intended to stay true to Dungeons & Dragons rules, but did this actually happen in Dungeons & Dragons games? How on earth did people keep track of all this before computers? I'll tell you, because for once I actually did some research, they didn't. Usually, inventory was capped to a manageable number of items. That isn't to say that you can't take advantage of computers to have a more robust inventory system in a game, but let's take a look at what this actually does. In order to rest properly, you have to make sure you have enough food. 40 units of food, specifically. This is an interesting nod to camp management, a cute little mechanic, but in my entire playthrough, it never once came up that I had any less than lots and lots of food. What would have changed in my playthrough if they'd not put food in the game at all? I'm pretty sure it's nothing. What would have worked better is a short chat early on with a teammate. They come up, hey, would you like me to sort out the camp supplies? I should be able to keep us fed for about 100 coins a night if you just want to leave it to me. 
and then camping would use a resource that isn't so abundant as to be redundant. Now inventory is spread between your characters, but if they are on your current team, you can move gear between them at any time, at any distance. There doesn't seem to be any penalties or turns used to do this. In my entire playthrough, I never had to drop items to make space, but I did find myself having to sort things between members fairly often. So why have separate inventories at all? And how about scrolls? This whole realm is made of scrolls. The entire periodic table is just different types of scrolls. They pave the streets with scrolls. They use scrolls for toilet paper. Fred the Bedlamite recreated Scroll Henge by chiseling it out of Mount Scroll and Manjaro. But mostly, there's the junk. There's neither leaf nor rock that doesn't hide something under. It was easier to just hoover up everything like Bioshock Infinite and sort it when I got back to camp. Just about everything could be some sort of quest item. So my storage trunk started to look like a tornado had gone through an accounting firm. And yet there was a solution that could have kept the immersion without the clutter. You see, the Alt key shows you everything on the map that can be interacted with. How about, on medium and hard difficulty, you get rid of that, but you also get rid of anything that isn't a mission item or otherwise useful. Instead of getting forensic with litter, we could spend that time on environmental evidence and interrogation. I'd take searching over sorting any day so we can get back to all the things the game gets right, like the really, really good turn-based combat. Leave the heaping piles of loot to Borderlands. What we have here is a game that exists entirely to the service of looting. The missions are either short and get right to the rewards, or they're long and go through a base with boxes of every shape and size, packed with truly random shinies to choose between. All of the problems of Baldur's Gate 3 are the upsides of Borderlands because it's built from the ground up to be that game. It both does and does not go overboard. The whole marketing premise was that it had a bajillion guns. So if it wasn't a whole bunch of crazy, it wouldn't be Borderlands. Whether the game is your cup of tea or not is up to you, but that randomizer never did anything short of the wildest loot ever seen in games. But saying Borderlands did loot well is rather effortless. What's more interesting is how it's basically what a loot box would be if it were free. Ethics aside, because I'm pretty sure there's no meat left on that bone, by the mere fact that loot boxes are paid for, there's an expectation of some level of quality, whether that be a gun, or a soccer player, or some <laughs> if it's a Japanese game. A random item generator can't guarantee this. You're going to wind up with people giving up and closing their wallets for good after six consecutive duds. If I pay nothing for a random reward, and it's a dud, I'm okay calling that a surprise mechanic. If I pay something for a random reward and it's a dud, I'll call that a ripoff. Putting a price on a surprise necessitates that that surprise be, well, less surprising. It creates a weird state where the whole act of making something cost money actively makes it worse. I'll expect a Nobel Prize for that epiphany, by the way. But since the topic of loot boxes is about as done as any, I think I can move beyond its obligatory mention to something more interesting. You don't look well at all. Sweet mother of God! One wave of nostalgia, courtesy of speeding offense. If you didn't feel it, this is Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. You might have heard of it. I just picked it up and I'm playing it for the first time and I was shocked by how much this feels like New Vegas. Just six years older. Different location, different story, not as deep, sure, but the same air nonetheless. If you've been itching for something like New Vegas and haven't tried this, and can suffer the whole, this game is 20 years old thing, you need to play this. But I bring it up because it doesn't have any sort of loot system. There's just key items. You have the thing or you don't, and when you no longer need an item, it disappears. Yeah, they had that figured out in 2004. You get new weapons by buying them, or they get dropped in your lap because of what? And it works just fine. I'm not saying that this system is better, but I am saying it's better for this game. You're a vampire doing politics, and that's somehow actually really interesting. And inventory management would just be faff, so it's not there. You know, when Bethesda started coughing out canned responses to poor reviews on Starfield, one of them included the line, You can fly, you can shoot, you can mine, you can loot. I think this sums up the whole problem with Starfield. Why are you doing any of them? Did this game need shooting, mining, flying, looting? I'm guessing it's maybe, no, no, and uh, no. It's like there was never a discussion as to whether these systems should be in the game at all. And I guess that's going to be the point, isn't it? 
What makes a loot system isn't good or bad mechanics, or frequency, or realism. The how of it has been worked out for 80 years now. You're gonna get the how right. What matters is the why. Why does your game have loot, and what does it do? And if you can't answer that question, remember it's perfectly acceptable to just not have it. I'll see you in the next one.